Rockford is a team that didn't come in with high expectation, has been terrific. Ten wins, two losses, upset wins over Oregon State, upset win over Ole Miss in their last contest. They are missing a major piece tonight in Keith Glover, who just isn't filling up to the task. Paladins knocked off Louisville, stopped a long November winning streak at the KSC. Yum Center opened up the season, a narrow loss against Mississippi State. So both these teams wins at the Power 5 level, another test. Alex Hunter starts out running the offense for the Paladins. Here's immediately Slauson down low. Double team comes, hooks shots up and gets the roll. And Terrence, a little preview there. The double team came early. It did come early. And Jacob trying needs to be a little bit more physical to push him away from the basket. But Jalen Slauson's so skilled with the basketball. He's so versatile in how he can score, whether it be attacking the basket or with his back to the basket. There you see the starting five for Coach Bucky McMillan squad in his second season at the helm. Down low fighting Cadet Jr. He loses the basketball, and then it's going to be a three-second violation and a turnover to start things off for the Bulldogs offensively. And Cardet might look to be a little bit more aggressive with Glover not being there. Cardet's an interesting case, though. Comes to the SoCon, comes to play at Samford, former top 50 player in the country out of high school. He has been an impact guy so far, but Furman's going to have to deal with pressure, and so far haven't been able to do so. Turnover on the inbounds, layup no good. Scramble for the rebound, taken down by the Bulldogs. Marshall battling down low, and now Sanford to slow things down. Just underway here in Greenville, Sanford and Furman to open up Southern Conference play for both these two teams. Shot clock down to three, trying to drive down the left side. Stanton McCray, his layup no good, tipped out of bounds, and it'll be Furman basketball. And hey, this is Tyrese Huey's first start in a Paladin uniform. You're going to see him number 15 as he walks, saunters back down the court. He's down on the other end, but this makes firm. This gives them a versatile group defensively. They can switch at all positions, especially towards the end of the shot clock. They're going to be able to maintain their defensive intensity. Huey getting the red shirt pulled off of him a game ago against Presbyterian College, and he will be a big-time contributor for this Paladin team. A two freshman that likes to bang and battle down low. A hawk on the glass. Bothwell. Skips it near side. Conley Garrison. Here is Huey. Shot clock down to 10. Hunter, a prolific three-point shooter. Bothwell in the lane. Five on the shot clock. Off the glass. Doesn't get the roll. Loose ball underneath. They'll stay with the Paladins. Good call. I thought there was a lot of contact going in there towards the rim, but he's being guarded by number two. Jaden Campbell, 6'5", 205. Sanford's got a big physical bunch of guys who can defend on the perimeter as well, and that can't happen. Can't leave that man open. Alex Hunter, top of the key. Two career highs and field goals made and three-pointers made against Mississippi State back on December 17th. He dropped 30 points in that game, and how about Furman nationally knocking down three-pointers in the top five of the nation as here comes a turnover. Furman looks to go quick. Bothwell thought about the quick three. Oh, Mike Bothell, Terrence, getting going again. Last time out, 21 points, 7 of 9 from the field, and that Paladin win over PC. And a lot of it's a result of, that was a lot of contact right there. Jalen Slauson with a nice, aggressive drive. But a lot of that's a kind of a reaction by opposing coaches as to, hey, we got to guard Alex Hunter, we got to guard Slauson. Things are starting to open up for Mike Bothwell. But Coach Bucky McMillan in season two has completely righted the ship, taking a lot of transfers. Jermaine Marshall, the Akron transfer, missing Quez Glover tonight, the Florida transfer, averaging close to 20 points a game. They got better in a hurry. And whenever you're able to go and upset Oregon State on the road, upset Ole Miss on the road, and do so in convincing fashion, you know your culture is starting to take effect. Gotta love Slauson. He's a mismatch for any team that Furman plays in the conference season. Quite frankly, Bryant, he was a mismatch for any team they played in the non-conference as well. He is that type of player. Started all 14 games, second leading scorer in the Paladin team, comes in averaging over 16 points a game. We mentioned Coach Richie saying, hey, it's not like he's giving us all we have talent-wise, because there's more he can go and excited as they get into Southern Conference play. Well, he's been handed a lot, of more, lot more responsibility for Furman this year, and a lot of that comes with some decision-making and he has turned the ball over at a high clip, and I hate to say it, right on cue. Oh, wow. Coach McMillan wanting a travel. Once you taking, think about taking another look, a little bit out of control. A good no call, and it should have been Furman's ball. I thought he got slapped on the wrist. 
can see the replay gets in there. Oh, and that was definitely a foul. It's either yeah. a foul or out of bounds, so Not go ahead and walk. give it to Furman. Got it knocked out. Here's Bothwell in the lane. Spins, leaves it off for a cutting. Huey misses the point blank layup. Good find by Bothwell, and here comes Sanford. Still looking for their first points three minutes into the contest, and they threw it away. And this has been an Achilles heel a little bit for Sanford, but that is a dead ball turnover, meaning they can set up their defense and get in front of the basketball. 13% of their possessions end up in live ball turnovers. That has led for teams getting out and running in transition. And Bob Ritchie has been terrific, Brian. What a job he's done. It's fifth year, nearing 100 wins, leading this Paladin program. NIT appearances, multiple postseason appearances, still trying to get the Paladins to the NCAA tournament. Oh, so close. That ball stripped away. Furman turns it over. Now lose. Boffle battling. Shot clock reset, and now Sanford comes into the front court with it. Campbell all the way, a lot of contact, and there's the foul. Nice take by Campbell, but man, what athleticism by Hugh. Hugh. We haven't seen him a whole lot. He's able to get up, contest. We got two freshmen on the floor, or at least a freshman for Sanford, Cardet. We'll see him go straight up. Oh, that was a Tell lot of ball right there, Brian. I'm not sure about that call. Nice Contact job. down low, but not enough really for a foul. Huey went straight up, and that's what Coach Ritchie's having a conversation with the officials saying, hey, it arms was, went straight up. Where's it, the foul? It was close. It was close, but that's what Tyrese Huey gives to you. And you'll see number one, that's Wesley Cardet. Two very physically gifted freshmen are going to be on the floor for large portions of this game as Huey checks out of the game. And another guy who comes in who's made significant strides in Marcus Foster, number five, who has been impressive in the early going of the season. Both knocked down from the line. Bulldogs on the board. Here comes that full court pressure you'd expect most of the game from this Bulldog squad. And what a luxury it is to have a five-man like Jalen Slauson who can help initiate offense and handle the ball well enough to break pressure. Sends it over to Bothwell on the corner, open three on the way, and that's off the rim. You saw the triple team come on Slauson. That left Bothwell wide open from beyond the mark. Bothwell can knock those down 34% from long range on the season. Senior out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Stanton McCray kicks it out. Three-pointer on the way, knocked down. Seven to five. Jan Real, the freshman out of Santa Barbara, California. Herman going quickly coast to coast. Bothwell's bumped, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. And what's going to happen is Sanford, since they're pressing full court, they're going to leave it open. And if Herman's able to break that pressure, they should be able to get some points on the back end of that press. 15-55 remaining here in the first half. Paladin's up a bucket here from Greenville. Welcome back into Timmons, Bryant, Lambert, Terrence, Ogilvy, and Terrence. These two teams in conference play battle-tested in the non-conference play and picked up some big wins. Oh, absolutely. Sanford just coming off a big-time win against Ole Miss, a well-coached Ole Miss team. But Furman's done their yep. share, too, against Louisville, and they've played really close to some other Power Six. Power, I, I say Power Six because I'm a Big East guy, too. So I say Power Six. But these two coaches are terrific. Moving forward this year, they have established their culture. Bucky McMillan, he expedited the process by getting rid of some bodies and bringing in his kind of guy. And you've seen the results of that so far this year. 10 and 2 is Sanford. But, the firm, but at Furman, Bob Ritchie has had this culture set in place for a long time. And I love the way they play. And I'll tell you why, Brian. So many guys that can make something happen on offense and so many guys that can make decisions for this team as Mike Bothwell knocks down his first. You have Jalen Slauson playing at five. You can present a lot of problems for opposing defenses. This Paladin team knocked off. Louisville narrowly lost to Mississippi State, gave North Carolina a game. That's out of bounds. It'll be Sanford basketball. We talk about Herman's toughest schedule probably in the league. Leads them into this thing where conference play starts. Talk a little guard your yard. You think about big getting down. It's a little bit different without Quez Glover, but you got to watch out dribble penetration. Oh, well, you're so switchable if you're Furman right now. You take in Grant, Grant, Garrett Heen, who's going to have to come in and do some hedging. He's not as switchable as the rest, but if you're able to guard the ball, you're able to limit rotations. And that settles down a lot of things for your defense, and it keeps you on top of the ball. Great job by Garrison. And how about Joe Anderson? He's helping out with somebody else's yard right now. What a neighbor. Leaves it for Alex Hunter. Couldn't knock down the long range shot. A rare miss for Hunter. And Furman gets the offensive rebound. Foster thought about it. He cuts into the lane over to Anderson. A ball movement type offense as that's knocked 
off the mark from Long Ranch. Donald Garrett Heen, a little bit of a, of a slump going through as a sophomore, but Coach Ritchie said, hey, the last two or three practices since the holiday break, because that's out of bounds, he said Garrett Heen's been practicing as good as anybody. Yeah, and he has, and he's had a little bit of a harder time when it comes to guarding bigger, stronger five men, and he's gotten out of rhythm because they're running offense through other guys. One of his best attributes, Brian, is his ability to pass the ball from the perimeter. He hasn't been put in as many of those positions because Jalen Slauson has taken a lot of those reps out of the way. But Joe Anderson, how about him coming in, dribbling the ball up the court, instant jolt of energy for Furman as soon as he checks in. It was Anderson in the Mississippi State game provided a spark also when the Paladins were home. Some earlier victories, College of Charleston helped establish shot clock getting down to 10. Interesting, Sanford going 2-3, and it's changing up a lot of things. Trying to move the ball a little bit quicker. Going to have to make a decision. Garrison on the baseline. Nice lay to Heen, and it took about 25 seconds, but made the adjustment and got the easy bucket. Nice job by Garrison. That's something you can rely on. The Drury University Division II transfer just knows where to be and what spots he needs to get to on the floor. Excellent read, getting to the short corner, and a nice pass to Heen. Hopefully that will get his confidence going for the Paladins. Laying off the glass and in, and Barnett Jr. letting folks know it. Back to a three-point game. Furman quickly into the front court, and they're going to say stepped on the sideline. It'll be a pallet and turnover. You need to play fast if you're Furman, but you don't need to get rattled. But Wesley Cardell, let's go ahead and talk about him for a second. How big and physical is that young man? Stands about 6'5". Oh, and a nice job by Garrison getting to the short corner, finding him, solid bounce pass, all fundamentals. you got to love it. D2 transfer. I love D2 guys. Yeah, Coach Ritchie's saying could be the smartest basketball player that he's coached, knowing where to be, and there'll be an offensive foul down low. That's Logan Dye, 6'9", junior, with Heen gardening. Dye coming off a little bit, what was it, a finger injury, seeing some action again. Well, he played really well against Ole Miss. He's just got that big physical body. If, if he's playing 15, 20 years ago, they're running more offense out of the block for him, but it's a little bit slow of foot, but he's strong as a knox. And last year, I don't know if you remember this, Bryant, last year me and you called this game. Yep. Now, Sanford wasn't nearly as talented as they are this year, but he did an excellent job of getting over the top of the defense. He scored a lot of points, ended up with a double-double last year, and played really well against Ole Miss in their last contest as well. Bothwell down low, kicks it out and open to Anderson. That three-pointer's up and in. Joe Anderson from long range, inside-out basketball. Tell you what, can't leave that guy open. 48% on the year from long range. Sanford looking to respond quickly. That's a bit too strong, and here come the Paladins again. Anderson to Pugh. Bothwell thought about a three in the corner. How about Jalen Pugh in for the Paladins? Six-foot senior out of Cartersville, Georgia, earning his playing time. Pugh, quick trigger three on the way, off the mark. Long rebound taken down by Sanford. Tell you what, the referees are letting them play. A lot of bodies banging. Nice drive. I believe by Campbell, who's made his presence felt here early. That's four quick ones for him. But Sanford showing pressure and then getting back to a 2-3 zone. And what you think, well, why in the world wouldn't they just stay with their man? Well, they know exactly what spots to get to when they're in a hurry. And what happens is when you have the body size that Sanford does, you're able to recover quicker. But it doesn't matter if Joe Anderson knocks down some shots. In front of the Bulldog bench, just a bit short, skip pass by Pugh, quickly into the front court. Cardet forces one up off the mark, strong rebound by Heen. You're talking about his confidence. He looked a little more confident than the last few times out early. Who's that, Garrett Heen? Talk here, about yeah, here he is battling yeah. down low, double team comes. Well, he's not forcing the issue. He's, not, he, he's been hit on a roll, he's passed the ball out, and that'll be a foul, almost a four-point play by Slauson, but he's he's catching the ball in a role where he's comfortable and he's able to find shooters on the perimeter. Garrett Heen, that's what he's best at when he catches the ball and he can survey the floor. Done a nice job finding open shooters so far, kicking out. And I will say this, Sanford sometimes over helps. And what does that do? That's gonna leave you open for a lot of perimeter shots if you're firm. You've gotta be able to knock them through. And this season so far, they've done just that. Talk about Furman and what they did in the non-conference, Terrence. How about four overtime games? That's tied for first nationally. Furman three and one in those overtime games. So you have, you've only played, not only have you played top competition, but you, you, you're testing in closed games. And Coach Richie feels like maybe this is his first team as the head coach that he feels like they know who they are coming into league play. Maybe in past years where they got 
you know, some things figured out in the first couple weeks of the league play. He says, hey, he, we know where we have to improve, and that's a reason to see Huey uh, on the court. Yeah, and they needed somebody that could come in and be really physical and not somebody that was as offensively minded. And Huey brings that element to your team with his hustle and his big body. And, and, and I'll tell you what, man, Furman, whenever they're able to get out in the passing lanes and he ain't showing his skill, oh, he's got to knock that in. Furman's really struggled taking care of the ball so far that, so far this game, Bryant. Well, tapped away, he'll stay with the Bulldogs. Sanford, we talked about some, some dead ball turnovers. That was a live ball when he couldn't make the layup. But seven Sanford turnovers have led to seven Paladin points. You look at the difference in the basketball game, that's playing a big part here as we're approaching the under 12 timeout. That's ab absolutely right. And that's almost another turnover right there. And this has been, this has been Sanford's Achilles Hill all season long. And in the keys of the game, you saw attack and transition. Well, wow, good shot right there by number four, Marshall. He has that inside out ability, but if they're able to attack and finish, they're gonna be able to score a lot of points. Over to Pew in the corner, quick trigger three, that one's short, rebound taken down by the Bulldogs. Sanford can tie it with a three, get within a point, and that's gonna be a blocking foul. Oh, and it'll be Sanford basketball when we come back. 11.32, here to go in the opening half from Tim is one possession game between two of the top teams in the SOCOM. Paladins up 15 to 12. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Ogles be with you. Terrence Furman shooting 31%, Bulldogs 44%, but Paladins forced some turnovers and that's why they have the narrow lead. Well, I mean, seven turnovers by Sanford and they're missing their major ball handling guy in Quez Glover, who's not feeling well, but they're going to have to take care of the ball if they're going to be able to stay in. But to counteract that, Furman, whenever they're able to get live ball turnovers, they have to finish layups. Missed two so far this game. Garrett Heen on the layup. And one other time, they weren't able to knock down a perimeter jumper when the defense collapses. They need to score off force turnovers. Garrison, Hunter, Slauson, Pugh, and Bopwell out there for the Paladins. Jalen Pugh earning more playing time. Coach Ritchie said, hey, People play hard in practice, they give it, they got a chance to, to get out there when it matters, and Pugh's done that, and he's seen some minutes here early tonight. Trying to drive with it as Marshall off the glass, doesn't get the roll, strong rebound taken down by Bothwell. Physical game down low, Furman wanted to go quickly into the front court. Lane splits, Bothwell right down the parts and lays it off the glass, and it's 19, or make it 17, 12, and Aaron, that's where you say you go to your spots. You got to stop the ball. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it seemed like there was no communication for Sanford. You can't do that against Mike Bothwell, of all people. A high-level score. Gave Louisville 30 early this, earlier this year. You open a red sea for him. He's going to be able to go right down the middle. And, Brian, I'll be honest, even I could probably finish that one. And I'm old. Well, you didn't do much in the lane, that three-pointer off the mark. Bothwell, the 49th member of Furman's 1,000-point club. He got that on December 10th in the Paladins victory over Appalachian State. So dynamic score. He's distributed the basketball as well as he gets it to Hunter down low. Back out to Bothwell. Furman being patient here offensively as the shot clock gets toward 12. Lawson. Showtime. Baseline jam one-handed. <laughs> you called it. You got to respect the three, Terrence. The defense tried to collapse, and hello. Well, how about... Jalen Pugh, who hasn't played a ton this year, using the ball screen collect correctly, creating the closeout for the Jalen Slauson hammer. Furman pushes the lead out to seven. Sanford got away with a walk, no call. Garrison with the re rebound. Furman has the largest lead here at seven. Out to Hunter for three. Yes, 22-12. Timeout taken by the Bulldogs as the Paladins in the midst of their largest lead here at 10. And Tell you what, inside out basketball, moving the defense, Terrence, and getting open looks. Well, Alex Hunter might be the best shooter in the country, but how about Jalen Slauson? Over top, he doesn't care about your feelings. Hey, you said you the can make a layup. Slam. You're not doing that, though. Well, on nine feet, I probably could. But how about Alex Hunter? Probably the best shooter in the nation. I, I, I'm big on hyperbole. I think we both know yeah. that. I like blowing guys up and making sure they feel good. That's the truth, though. But it's the truth. He's shooting over 50% after, after the few makes he's had today. A terrific shooter coming into the game, not even in conference season, over 53's made. Well, how about Alex Hunter in the game up in Chapel Hill on December 14th? Finished with 21 points, but he had 17 in the first half. He had the Dean Dome looking around saying, who is this kid out of Greenville? Alex Hunter, a big part of the Paladins, non-conference success, and Bucky McMillan 
if you're in that huddle, Terrence, real quick, what are you telling your team? Well, you better, you better D up and you better communicate. That's the thing that you have to worry about the most right now. You know you're going to turn the ball over. You have to fix it on the defensive end and fix it with your communication. They haven't done a very good job jumping over on help side for the dunk or getting anywhere on transition defense. For example, with the Mike Bothwell wide open layup. Need to do a better job defensively. Logan great job. Dye. Alex Hunter, what great help side defense. Get over there, jump up, straight verticality. He doesn't have a ton of size. Oh, my goodness. He was about half an inch short from throwing it down. Two steps through the lane. Watch out Jalen Slauson. at Sanford back with the basketball, trailing by 10. Furman in the midst of a 7-0 run. Three from the quarter on the way. That one short, long rebound. Battle for it, taken down by the Bulldogs. Stanton McCray lays it in, and that stops a little bit of the pallet momentum. And a technical foul going against Sanford. It looks like on the reaction. That's going to be Stanton McCray getting called for the reaction. We'll see if you can take another look. And Terrence, that's the last thing you can do if you're the Bulldogs. And it's for the reaction after the made layup. Well, it's a good it's a good job by him to try to bring the effort up. Obviously, you can't direct it towards the officials, but it was a tough finish. But you can't give up free points. You appreciate the energy if you're if you're Bucky McMillan, but at the same time, you can't let your emotions get away from you. And even after such a strong play, it looks like he's gonna sub out of the basketball game, which you need a guy like him. Knocks down one of two from the line, and he will stick out. You say, hey, yeah, he's a big part of it, but he almost got to settle down a little bit and go to the bench. Coach Bucky McMillan doesn't even talk to him as he goes by. And well, I mean, what are you going to say? That, that, well, yeah, that's the just he knows, knows what he did. Yeah, he knows what he did. What are you going to say? You appreciate the enthusiasm he's trying to play with, to try to bring your team back in it. Your team's come out a little slow, especially on the defensive end. You need that jolt of energy. Herman four out, Hunter looks to drive baseline, cuts through the defenders out for Garrison, three-pointer, buckets. It's get the assist to Alex Hunter. It's unbelievable. A lot of people say against the zone, you got to get in the middle. Well, you don't necessarily have to pass it there. That's a great job by Alex Hunter, knowing what spots to get to. And once the defense converges, Conley Garrison, we've talked about Alex Hunter being an excellent shooter. Conley Garrison's right up there as well. Garrison comes in 45% from behind the arc. And how about this? Furman's sixth assist on eight made field goals, sharing the basketball. Sanford. Just two assists, only made five field goals. That's last foul going against the Palins. Alex Hunter, his first and the team's third. 12 point Furman lead the Palins largest here in the opening half. Bulldogs have yet to have the lead. Campbell, long three pointer, knocks it down, pulls it up from long range, and a big three pointer. The third of the night for the Bulldogs. The Sanford team, a team that knows that can fill it up from long range. Driving baseline and lays it over the top of the rim. Marcus Foster, and Terrence, we've talked about it. Furman made some threes. The defense closes out quickly. That's a couple easy drives to the basket on the straight line drives. Well, whenever they pitch it back out, Wow, what a, what a strong drive. Cardet just can't find a way to finish, but whenever the defense is trying to get back out, the shooters are closing out so hard, it's leaving driving lanes wide open, and Furman's done a nice job of attacking those closeouts, and Sanford needs to get lower with a hand up and their butt down, and they'll be able to guard a little bit better, but nobody seems to be guarding one-on-one -on -one for Sanford right now. Off the mark from Huey, long rebound by Foster. Furman's made five of their last seven from the field. Garrison out to Anderson in rhythm three. That one's off the right side. Battle for it down low, out of bounds. Last touch by Furman. And there will be Bulldog basketball when we come back. Furman starting to heat up. Opening up an 11-point lead here with 7.25 to go in the first. Paladins up 11, 28-17. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Oglesby with you. Talked about Coach Bob Ritchie in his fifth year leading the program, Coach Ritchie, what he's done, three straight 21 seasons, set school records in win, that NIT appearance. One thing's missing, that's the NCAA, and this team might be the one to do it. Yeah, and I mean, he's, he's come close several times, and, and we talked about it a little bit. Last year, because of the way scheduling was, Bryant, they play three less home games than they do away games. They don't really get set up. It's possible 
They would have won, won they, they would have, the league. Yeah. They would have won a share of the league yeah. in the regular season. So, I mean, you hate that it doesn't count towards anything, but at the same time, the only thing really out of the way is a conference title, and they're going to be up for it this season. Some of those games the Paladins missed last year, not to the fault of theirs with COVID protocols, were some of the bottom teams in the league, and get those games, get a tie for the regular season crowns. Anderson thought about a three, sends it back to the corner. Strong drive, Foster, he'll kick it to Slauson. Slauson, pump fakes, back out to Garrison, wide open in front of the Sanford bench, and unselfish basketball. Oh, it's unbelievable to me. Not only are they playing unselfish, and that's all great and good, but Sanford's doing a really poor job with closeouts. Good job, Conley Garrison, getting back on defense, but Sanford's, it's like jumping jacks. They're so worried about the three-point shot, and they should be because Furman shoots the ball so well, but an excellent skip pass to the corner by Slauson, and that's what he brings to your team from the five position. That versatility, the ability to pass the ball, and Conley Garrison, did you say 45%, Brian? I mean, he is terrific from beyond the arc. What'd you put you on the spot? You remember what your percentage was from long range at Clemson? I don't know. It's tougher when you shoot it every time you touch it. I didn't exactly <laughs> take open ones. Long rebound to Bothwell into the front court, hesitates, mid-range jumpers up and in. Say what, smart play by Bothwell. You don't force the drive, you don't try to draw contact there. You pull up, confidently knock down the shot. He well, now has six. Jacob Tryon, number 42 for Sanford. He stands about six feet, 11 inches tall. We used to call that the point guard layup whenever I was coming up. Stop right about that eight foot mark and knock it in. Stan McCray off the mark, ball tipped around. Joe Anderson with the rebound. Furman out rebound of the Bulldogs, 15 to 12. Largest lead at 16, that's off the mark. And how about keeping that alive, Conley Garrison. All six foot one of them, and then a three-pointer by Joe Anderson. Timeout Sanford, and all of a sudden, Furman in the midst of a 10-0 run has pushed the lead to 19 with 5.41 to go in the half. If Sanford doesn't wake up in a hurry, it's going to get really ugly. It's already 19. It could balloon to 30, 35 points. But how about Furman? They are running them in a tizzy, attacking the offensive glass. Defense is converging. It's basically turning into target practice from beyond the arc. And then even whenever they're able to get out, they're undisciplined in their closeouts. They're jumping jacks. you got to get past that you get to the lane, you either dunk it or you knock down threes when help defense comes in. Furman being led, very balanced scoring. Jalen Slauson has eight, six for Anderson and Garrison, five for Bothwell, seven for Hunter. That's what makes it so hard right now for the Bulldogs. It's just not one player doing it. It's everybody contributing for the Paladins. Well, I mean, Joe Anderson, who didn't give a ton at the beginning of the season, has come alive giving energy, and he's able to shoot the ball well also. I mean, what makes this te Furman team dangerous is that Slauson, Hunter, and Bothwell can all get 30. But what also makes them dangerous is they got about five or six other guys that can give you double figures. And that's what other teams lose sleep at night is that those other guys. Another turnover for Samford. Anderson poked it away, and then it'll slow things down. Anderson had a career-high five assists in the Furman win over Appalachian State right before Christmas. So coming on strong, here's Heen down low. Sends it out to Bothwell, who thought about a three. Spins in the lane over to Slauson. Shot clock sits at 10. Hunter thought about it. Now he'll pull the three-pointer in and out. Rebound taken down by the Bulldogs. It's a surprise whenever he doesn't make it, Bryant. Hunter, two of four from long range tonight. You talked about Hunter, Bothwell, Slauson, can each drop 30? Well, they all have dropped 30 this year. That wasn't one of your hyperboles. That's a fact of what's happened. As the Bulldogs try to crawl back in this one, they'll take a long three. That's off the back of the rim. Offensive board blocked by Heem, but a foul. There'll be two shots at the line for Cardet coming up, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You take care of the glass on the defensive end. You've been able to get whatever you want on the offensive end, but Cardet at the free throw line, big physical kid. Hasn't shot great percentages this season, but you see, I mean, big broad shoulders, top 50 recruit coming into Sanford. I mean, physically, he stands out. Skill-wise, he's still got a way to go. But once he gets there, he's going to be scary. But he's, he's doing a nice job of what he's good at and using his body. Offensive rebounds, he leads his team. Terrific athlete. It's just going to take a minute for him to figure it out. And you got to give Bucky McMillan credit. He lets him play through his mistakes. Sanford without a field goal the last four minutes, but getting on the board with those two free throws as that ball's tipped out of bounds, or tipped toward the sideline, kept inbounds, and quickly into the front court is Cardet. He spins, has the ball poked away. Loose underneath, open three-pointer, top of the keys off the mark. 
and Heen there to grab the rebound. And now you can go and make decisions because Sanford gets so top heavy with their defense. How about that, Bothwell to Anderson. Either one of them could have shot it at first. Back to Bothwell, another sister Anderson and another Furman three, the lead's at 20. Well, they're just playing disciplined basketball. They're passing up good shots for great ones and it seems like Sanford's took, taken a lot of tough ones. Logan Dye battling down low, working against Heen. Heen blocks it from behind. Strong defense without fouling for the sophomore. Who gets rewarded running the court, double team, tries to send it out to Anderson and has it poked and stolen away by Real. Campbell to the corner, three on the way, that's off the mark. Weak side rebound, but a push going against Cardet. And it'll be Furman basketball shooting a one and one when we come back. They'll be at the line shooting one and one, 3.38 to go here in this opening half. And Terrence, it was a four point game about halfway through the half. Furman, a pair of 7 0 runs, a 10 0 run. What's been working for the Paladins? Well, I mean, when your best players are your seniors and they're making the right decisions and unselfish decisions, we know Sanford, they've had a hard time turning over the basketball, especially. And you see tonight, too, how much they miss Quez Glover. I mean, he's the engine to this Bulldog team. Missing him takes their primary ball handler away. They're turning it over, and Furman's making phenomenal decisions on the other end. And Sanford, because they're trying to pressure full court, they're opening themselves up to a lot of open threes, and they're top heavy with their defense. So what happens when you have really good players and good decision makers like Furman does, you're able to take advantage right away. Just the sixth team found the Bulldogs. My apology, no one-on-one. -on -one. Furman beats the full court pressure. Bothwell. Out to Slauson, over to Garrison. Garrison tries to give it down low to Huey, a bit too strong out of bounds. Tell you what, you've seen some different lineups out there at times. Joe Anderson has been out there with Conley Garrison. Some different pairs out there. Coach Richie's kind of said, hey, I got my core, then I can I have pieces I can put in based off matchups, who's all playing well, and it's been nice to see him kind of experiment a bit, and it's worked out down low with some combinations. Well, it's been interesting because they're so fast and they're so good at getting in the passing lanes. And for, I mean, that was probably, there was a lot of contact there. I thought Slauson got fouled, but, you know, they just make unselfish plays. Campbell could have gotten it down low to Logan Dye. He was open on the block, elected to take the three off the mark. Bulldogs just three of 12 from long range, two of their last 16. <laughs> Meanwhile, Furman keeps it going from long range. That's a no, no, no. Great shot, great shot, great shot. You go in transition, you get something going. Bob Ritchie obviously likes the make, doesn't love the tempo. Furman's beating this team because they're pushing it in transition and they're really passing the ball. And you got a little step back action. It wasn't quite James Harden, it wasn't a travel because they're focusing on that travel. But Mike Bothwell, when he's knocking down his three, he's so strong a driver, it makes him that much more dangerous. Bothwell, the only player in double figures, he has 11 for the Paladins. Balance scoring, leading the Bulldogs is Campbell with seven. I mean, Campbell played really well against Ole Miss, but, and I hate to beat a dead horse with this one, but Quez Glover controls the pace, controls the tempo for this Sanford team because quite frankly, he's so difficult to guard in one-on-one -on -one situations. And when there's nothing happening on offense, he can fix it for you because he's such a good isolation score. Nice pass. Layup doesn't fall, went all around the rim, offensive board, back up with it too strong. Nothing falling for the Bulldogs, but they'll get a third chance. Furman up 42-19 against a very good Sanford squad. Good defense down low, nice pass over to Tyron, lays it off the glass and in, and that stops a 6-0 Furman run and a scoring drought of two and a half minutes for the Bulldogs. Oh, what a pass. Garrison. Oh, come on. How about Alex Hunter? He wasn't the most talked about player for this Paladins teams coming in, but that's a left-handed pass on the fly. I'd love to see a replay next stoppage if that's possible, but what it. Watch show, out. Showtime. Showtime slows it. Forget about it. And there's nothing you can do. Sanford's already taken two timeouts. I mean, you can't take another one. 46, 21. And that's the one when he gets the steal. Slawson, that is, at midcourt. Everybody watching in the arena says, watch out. Oh, unbelievable athleticism. He's just so explosive whenever, especially when he has a head of steam like he did right there. I mean, super athletic, really skilled player. I talked to a buddy of mine, Steve Prohm, at the beginning of the year. Before the season started, we're doing all these previews for some other work that I do with the field of 68. And he said, you know, I've seen pros, 
And Jalen Slauson fits that mold because of his length, athleticism, his skill level out on the perimeter. You could see him. They say play on Sundays when it comes to football, but Hunter. he is that talented. Thought about it out to Slauson. Over to Bothwell. Thought about a three. Bothwell, I'll tell you what, sitting here with 11 points, four, six. He's been in the gym, Terrence, working on his shot every day. You wouldn't call it a slump he was in as Slauson forces the miss. But teams were game planning for him. It's asked out of bounds, it'll be firm and ball. But Bothwell's been able to shoot. But Terrence, take a look there. Nice pass what by Hunter. What a pass. I mean, that is such a difficult pass to pick it up off the dribble and feed. And how about Jalen Slauson? I mean, that's up high, down hard. Tell the camera about it a little bit, big fella. Hunter running the point. But back to Bothwell, when you're a player and, and you put all the effort in and you're putting in more work and see it pay off, that's just got to feed you and motivate you, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, that's what you work so hard for. And he's done a nice job, Alex Hunter. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I, it's, it, he's missed two in a row. I don't think that's happened all year. 25-point Furman lead here, late stages, first half. Ball poked away. Paladin's running again. Hunter up to Bothwell off the glass, but he'll go to the line for two as it falls off the rim. Everybody's running the court. He's Furman getting out fast. But they've done a good job of what managing the break. When it's there, take it, would not pull it back to the half court. Well, another thing, too, is, is Sanford's making a lot of one-on-one -on -one plays, and the rest of the team are just kind of standing around. The only time they really move is when really has the ball. And it's kind of the same concept whenever Quest Glover's playing. They move, they find open spots, but now, without Glover in the mix, it's stalled their offense. And they're still trying to make one-on-one -on -one plays, and Furman just in the right place at the right time most of the time. Bothwell closing in on a season average here in the first half. Logan Dye back in for the Bulldogs. Furman's played nine guys tonight, all at least seven minutes. I mean, it just shows their versatility, not only offensively, but defensively. This group right now, with Slauson at the five, Foster at the four, you're very switchable. And Slauson presents different match a difficult matchup for anybody he plays against. And he's pushing passes out, and it's making the offense really difficult. Oh, gosh. Ball poked away. Battle four is going to be Furman basketball. I'll tell you what, Sanford's struggling to even pass near midcourt right now. Shot clock turned off. Furman's just playing harder. And there's been more discipline. You can see, I, I hate to say it and say it and say it again, but Quez Glover changes the game for this team. And it's like they've lost their way. They're not relying on each other. They're not relying on their movement. They're ry relying on individual playmaking. And Furman's so good defensively with the lineup they have in, they're going to make you pay. And whenever, let's be honest, Brian, when your best players are your hardest playing players, you saw Jalen Slauson end up with his forehead in the Sideline up, up 27 points. That's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Furman knew this is conference time. Sanford's still trying to figure it out. 15 seconds to go in the half. Shot clock turned off. Bothwell. Ball poked away. Bothwell gets it back. Six to shoot over to Hunter. Three-pointer off the rim. No good. Sanford now with one second. She'll, he'll throw up the half court. He left. Tell you what, that last possession might be the only thing you can nitpick that went wrong for the Pallet is that first half. It's been the only sloppy thing that's occurred all game, and, and they've just been so sharp turning defense into offense, and Coach Bob Ritchie has to be thrilled going into the locker room. It's all Furman after the first half here in Greenville. 48-21, halftime coming up from Timmins. Sanford basketball to start the second half. Furman coming in, kind of the game plan was to run in transition, move the ball, make them guard multiple sides of the floor. And it's hard to guard Slauson. You mentioned around four shooters as Furman comes out battling defensively again as Stanton McCray can't make it in a late whistle. But I'll tell you what, Furman wants to get out and run. Four shooters around Slauson. If that was the game plan, they did a pretty good job of that in the first half. Yeah, they absolutely did. And coming out with a lot of energy here in the second half. Nice job coming over on help. Bit of an unfortunate bounce. Good hustle by Sanford trying to get after the loose ball. But State McCray, who got off to a little bit of a rough start in the first half, got a technical foul after a bucket. Needs to get off to a good start here for Sanford. Defensively, though, I mean, you saw the difference between Furman and Sanford this game. Now, Sanford's played well this year. They've had better showings. 
But that possession right there gave a perfect example of what Furman's capable of, of on the defensive end. A little bit of token full court pressure here for the Bulldogs to start this second half. Sanford's going to get back in when it's going to end this one. It's going to start on the defensive end. Huey in for the Paladins. Little backdoor cut, reverse layup, a nice five from Slauson. Really give and go and a nice job moving without the basketball by the freshman. Great pass, great cut, great finish by Huey. Going back door on a, an upperclassman die who you would think that wouldn't happen to too often. And every time Sanford gets the ball, every time they catch it, they dribble twice. And it's inhibited their player movement. Every player dribbles the basketball. Battling down low, Die working to get Slauson up and gets the roll. Logan Die gets her, his first points. He has two as Furman quickly gets the ball, even off of Make. Furman's quickly getting it into the front court. And they're patient and they're driving closeouts. Garrison can't quite get the layup to fall, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds by Huey. Possession over to the Bulldogs. Defensively, Samford just needs to be better. I, I don't know what to say differently, Brian. They just need to be better. That can't happen that easily. And okay. Coach McMillan obviously not happy. Marshall checking out of the basketball game after not closing out at the level that is needed to play here at the SoCon. Sanford basketball. This is only one of two games in the Southern Conference tonight. The other one going on over in Spartanburg at the half VMI, a 39-29 lead over Wofford. You had UNCG and Western Carolina Mercer and the Citadel both postponed for COVID protocols. And that layup is good by Cardet Jr. He now has six and it's a 50-26 game. You see Coach Ritchie telling his team, let's get organized offensively here early. Second half comes out with that 27 point halftime lead. Huey can't quite roll it off the top of his hands and here come the Bulldogs. Baseline drive sent over to Campbell. His three pointers off the mark. Alex Hunter with the rebound. Now attack, now attack. Now you're fr now Furman gets a rebound, they take off. Sanford gets back, does a nice job setting their defense, but Ash Furman just does such a good job of attacking closeouts and skip passing. Just an unselfish bunch. And another one from the corner. My main man, Mike Bothwell, if he's able to knock down shots, we've talked about it. And that ball's popping, makes it a lot easier on him. 16 for Bothwell. He's been putting in the extra work. It's been showing. Nice job by Slauson defending without fouling. Bothwell out running. Hesitates off the glass, can't get it to fall. Late whistle and a foul. It'll be Bothwell at the line shooting two. Going back to that three by Bothwell, it all started by Garrison's no look to Slauson. Slauson passed up what you called the good shot for the great shot. And here's the shot by Bothwell in the corner as Furman's knocked down nine threes. It's always good to, to look at the make, but at the same time, that play happened three passes before when Garrison caught the ball in a position to attack the drop. And Furman, when they're playing unselfish like they usually do, are so dangerous. Bothwell, three of four. I'll tell you what, if you listen to us tonight, Furman's the best team in the country. They play, they play well. <laughs> they, I mean, they played really well, but I mean, <laughs> and Richie turns around and says, good work, guys. <laughs> no, but look, you know, they're just moving the ball and playing together at such a high rate. It, it's made Samford look like, hey, man, there's something missing, and there, and there is. But defensively, from an intensity standpoint, Samford has to be better. And, and it even comes down to offensively, they need to create better looks for themselves, and then they don't get stuck in transition situations. Lead up to 29, that's the Paladins largest. Heavy man-to-man -man pressure defense, that's what Firm has been in since the opening tip. Campbell looking Golly. to go one-on-one, -on -one. tough shot, rebound taken down by Slauson. 10 points, five rebounds. He's almost to a double-double. Foster. Back and they don't Bothwell. overdo it. They don't overdo it. I mean, Foster doesn't have anything, doesn't force the issue, gets it back out, finds a way to make something happen. Then you get skip passes and knock down shots. Alex Hunter now with 10. He's the third Paladin in double digits. It's basketball one-on-one, -on -one and Coach Ritchie hasn't called Bill at three plays. 
and it's just a senior late or not senior late. Wow, how about well, that? If they, if that's what you got to do to generate offense, it's been a rough night. But you got some seniors, the fifth year Alex Hunter, the senior Bothwell. It's long, but it's a balanced team. You got youth, you got seniors, and tell you what, that's that's the scary combination when you talk about it. Well, when your best players are your old guys too, I think that's important. Herman turns it over, a rare turnover for the Paladins, trying to get a backdoor cut. Stanton McCray sends it over wide open through Campbell. That's off the mark. Battle for the rebound, still loose, and it's going to be grabbed by the Paladins, and that's Marcus Foster. Rebounds 28-21 in favor of the Paladins. Talk about Furman offensively looking in control. Talk a little bit about that. You say not panicking. If something's not there, you just go to your secondary option, and there's Garrison. Can't get the roll, but everything looks in the flow. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, let's be honest. I mean, it's been pretty easy decision-making, and then whenever something does happen, they can always go to their go-to guy in Slauson to make something happen for their offense. Well, tipped around, Slauson with another rebound. Be shots on the other side after the under-16 timeout. Second half going like the first, firming up 30 here over Samford. Furman up 30 here at the under 16 timeout. There you see the triple threat, Bothwell, Slauson, and Hunter, what they've done tonight. But how about Alex Hunter? Over 400 assists on that last assist tonight. Thousand Only points. the fifth player in Furman history with four, uh, 400 assists. How about uh, that? I mean, what a career. 1,000 points, 400 assists. I mean, he did get that extra year, not taking anything away from a man, but you still got to do it. But, I mean, it's just been a balanced attack. And when you're led by those three, and it could be Slauson one night, it can be Bothwell another, it can be Hunter another. It just makes them so dangerous. Knocks down the first. Here's a crazy thing about it. Bothwell has 18 points on eight shots. Hunter has 10 points on seven shots. Three of seven, all from three. That's, I find, I get it. But Slauson only six shots, 12 points. I mean, it's an efficient bunch, and they move the ball so well. Slauson. Going to get a bit of a breather as he checks out. And it's all what those Paladins had done, the trifecta, Bothwell, Hunter, Slauson. But how about the contr contributions from Joe Anderson and Garrison as hate? You always had some big minutes. It's not just those three. That three-pointer is well off the mark. I think it, it's the big three plus everybody around them that can be so dangerous. Here's Joe Anderson running the fast break. Well, they just create for each other, and Joe Anderson Whenever he's good, that's just an added bonus because he is so fast with the basketball. 12 on the shot clock. Bothwell, left-handed three, in and out, no good. Rebound taken down by Cardet. Herman up 32, an overmatched Sanford squad here through the first 25 minutes and another turnover. Bothwell over to Anderson. Thought about a three, cuts into the lane and will set up the half-court offense. Hesitates. Hey, well, that's a good example of nothing's there, not rushing it and getting a good look as Marcus Foster gets it blocked out of bounds. Logan Dye comes with the block. Foster's so athletic, he needs to attack Dye's chest and get on top of his chest or else you're going to have a really hard time finishing over top. Nice job, Logan Dye jumping, coming across, getting all ball. If he's able to get his chest on top, Marcus Foster's so long, he's not going to be able to block it. Four on the shot clock. Heen sends it out to Bothwell. Long three-pointer top of the key. Front rim comes over near side. Rebound taking down Angel Smith, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. And four of the shot. Going to get a hand check going against Bothwell, and that'll be the third pallet and foul of the second half. Been a rare mistake closing out and still letting somebody go middle. Out on the wing, but Cardet so strong. It's hard to hold on. Die battling down low, hesitates off the glass. Nice job, Logan Die. Timeout taken. Bucky McMillan, his team down 60 to 30, will extend to a media timeout. 13:27 to go. Paladins doubling up the Bulldogs here in the Southern Conference opener. Lawrence High School cheerleaders in the house tonight. Furman students out on winter break. 
for what's been a very tough place for opponents to play, not just this year, Terrence, last five, six years, this atmosphere, one of the best, if not the best, in the Southern Conference. Students pack it out. Fans have been selling this place out. Herbal has some big games coming up at the Botscourt's Wellness Arena later this year. Wofford Mercer coming up on downtown. And I'll tell you what, Bob Richards developed not just a good basketball team, a nice pass to Heen, but it's really a brand that the community and Furman fans have gotten behind. Well, I was just about to say, whenever you were talking about tonight's crowd, you, you know, students are home, but still a pretty good Christmas crowd, all things considered, right before New Year's. Furman fans know that their Paladins are going to make a real effort to get towards the top of the SOCON this season. Garrett Heen, this is a good game for him. Somebody who struggled a little bit throughout the course of the season with positioning, with a little bit of confidence issues. It's good for him to stay in the ball game and figure things out and play through some of those mistakes. Coach Richie saying with you know, Huey coming in and that's really motivated Heen. Last couple of practices we mentioned in the first half, He's practiced as good as anybody. And then if you can translate, I mean, Terrence, you've gotten used to this. Can you translate practice of what you did to games? That's kind of the next step, right? You figure it out. But what's the difference to doing it uh, when the bright lights are on versus in practice as you've had a lot of experience there? Yeah, absolutely. And it all comes from your work. If you put in good work consistently, it's much easier to translate to the game. And like Coach Richie told us prior to tonight's game, Heen really seems like he's going to be able to take the step to get back on track. It's, Sanford showing a little bit of life with some full court pressure. 30 point Furman lead approaching 12.50 to go here in the second half. Palin has beat the pressure as Joe Anderson picks up his dribble. What's the balance of Terrence when you, you beat a team's full court pressure, attacking and not letting him get set defensively versus making sure you get a good look as Anderson breaks down the deep? Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of coaches that go, that's air to the side of, hey, hard, Good shots are so hard to come by at the collegiate level. Let's just go ahead and shoot them early. But tonight for, for Furman, they've been able to get whatever they want on the offensive end. So maybe you don't have to rely on quick threes as much. But Joe Anderson has been impressive. Quick guard out of Maryville, Tennessee. Played for Bobby Mays Elite. Excellent passer. One of Tennessee's sons. About an hour up the road from where I'm from in Tennessee. So that's good in your part. Too. Yeah, that's, a, that's in my area. Lawson, nice find over to Heen, goes up strong, he'll be found. And that's a confidence play. That's a confidence play. That's where he's getting put in position to make something like that happen. And you have to love it because the first person who runs over there and congratulates him, Slawson, hey, man, good effort. Way to get back in it as you see State and McCray limping back. But nice pass by Slawson, goes up over the top. Obviously a foul on the wrist, but Garrett Heen, like we said earlier, great game as he misses his first free throw. Great game for him to come back and regain some of that confidence that he was playing with towards the beginning of the season. What about Slauson? We're talking about being unselfish. He could have maybe gone up and, and, and finished there. Instead, leaves it off to Heen. He went up strong. As comes in averaging near six points a game as Heen. Knocked down now five tonight, one of two from the line. Five points, two rebounds. Go along with two personal fouls. Well, Slauson also realized that he needs – that. This team is going to need Heen at some point during the year to have a breakout game because he is that guy on this team with that level, that 6'9", six, 6'10", six, height. They're going to need him to make an impact at points during this year and to get his confidence back sooner rather than later is something Furman's going to need. But Obviously, th this defense just wide open as Heen gets another one. Uh, and, and look, that's, wide off open. A, that's off a made basket. Furman gets out like that and gets a wide open dunk. Yeah. And that's going to happen if you're Sanford. You're going to get a little top heavy trying to pressure and liven some things up. But Alpha Make, it's a guard's responsibility to fix it because Logan Dye just finished around the basket. Somebody's got to get back and help him. 17 fast break points for the Paladins. 22 made field goals. Furman with 16 assists. Here comes Hunter. Stop. Pop. That's just off the front of the rim. Offensive board. Slauson can't get it to fall. Gets another one. He's talking about patting some stats. That's three offensive rebounds, but he couldn't get the layup to fall. Big Kevin Love vibes right there from Mr. Slauson. Slauson, seven rebounds, 12 points, three from the corner. Good knocked down by Quinn Ritchie, sophomore to Johns Creek. Timeout will take us to the called media timeout. Furman holding steady up 30 with 11.03 to go in the Southern Conference opener. Stop the bleeding. For about 30, 
here to open Southern Conference play. Big time Timmons Arena environment. Normally, Paladins will head downtown January 8th, the doubleheader. Jackie Carson, the women's team, taking on Western Carolina. Bob Ritchie and the Paladin men and Mercer. And Terrence, February 5th and 19th. Talk about two games that made aside the Southern Conference. UNCG and Wofford come to town. It could be four or 5,000, if not more folks downtown. Well, I will say this. The wofford Furman game is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Two teams that can really shoot the basketball. Wofford has a young man named Max Klesman, who's about as fun to watch as some of Furman's players can really score the basketball, Wisconsin native. But the good thing is, is we get privileged to that game at the Wells Fargo Arena. Correct? Bonds, of course. Bons Wells course. Fargo's up Philly. What's the well then? That was a well. Because it used to, uh, the well was kind of the nickname for Bon Secours Wellness Arena. The well. I'm You're up, thinking Wells Fargo up in yeah, Philly. Yeah, I was. And I played at the That's well. your Big East time. You That's played right. up there at Clemson, right? Yeah, I did. And I played at the Wells Fargo in Iowa when I played in the G League. It's story time here. Firm it up 30. <laughs> History lesson, if you will. <laughs> y'all travel big time in the G League? Charter uh, first class for everybody? How much, how much do you enjoy nine hour bus rides is the main question. <laughs> Another good defensive possession coming out of the timeout. Now, you got to give Richie's team credit. The effort has not waned. You're up 30. You got to figure out how to play together. You got to still be patient. And they're still running offense through Garrett Heen, and he's making the right decisions. Alex Hunter, what is Alex Hunter tonight? He hasn't shot the ball particularly well. It's three for eight for downtown, 10 points, one to two from the line, three pointer on the way. That's off the mark. Heen, tell you what, he's playing with confidence, making reads. There he gets the rebound, gets it up to Hunter to start the break. Tell you what, you said Furman's still playing hard. Credit the Bulldogs. A little short, they're getting back defensively when they can. They're stopped the break, but right now, just too many options for the Paladins. Conley Garrison, oh, was he done? Can you say quiet 11 points? Quiet 11 points, just a product of the basketball moving. And, and you know, Sanford, for all intents and purposes, their second best player, Jermaine Marshall, who we showcase prior to the game wasn't feeling well not COVID related we were told but you know at the same time Conley Garrison's feeling himself that kid that couldn't have been on purpose looked like we had a one-handed baseline thoughts of a Jalen Slauson jam there quick trigger three on the other side off the mark offensive board nice put back Jacob Tryon the senior out of California think Conley Garrison had dreams of a slam same dreams I had of a slam same result. <laughs> Folks that, that need to find out that reference from our friend, Mr. Oglesby, just go to YouTube and type in Terrence Oglesby, dunk first Duke. Okay, so this That's, is this is a point of the game where he could get sloppy. Now, Bothwell doesn't make the right read. Nice move by number two, Campbell, but this is where you have to at least stay disciplined, and this is where problems could arise because Sanford's still – really attacking the basketball once it gets into the paint. Still got to rely on each other to create shots. Furman still shooting 45%, Bulldogs 31%. You talk about Furman looking a little sloppy and Coach Ritchie letting him hear it. Two turnovers in a row and a sloppy foul by Slauson who doubled down on his mistake. Hey, and you sometimes you don't want to give a coach something to go back and look at. We're giving it. This is what's happening right now. Furman's coming off a little bit sloppy, a turnover by Bothwell, a turnover by Slauson. Obviously, Sanford hasn't been able to capitalize, but I'll tell you what, Bob Ritchie's face changed for the worse, as you, saw, as you saw on the television. But it's been a rough going for Sanford, but at the same time, you want complete effort for the entirety of the game if you're a basketball coach. Nice pass. That layup doesn't fall. Slauson, eight rebounds. He's two rebounds away from a double-double. Garrison in transition over to Hunter, just a bit too strong right on line. And here come the Bulldogs. Angel Smith goes right at the Paladins and tapped out of bounds. It'll be fervent basketball when we come back. Little sweet Carolina action inside Timmins Arena. Tough place to play and without students here, maybe a little game that Sanford thought, oh wait, we get to go to Timmins without students. Well, that hasn't been the case. Sanford will get to go back to Birmingham on Saturday, try to regroup against the Citadel, then a tough contest down to make it. Well, I mean, it's so kind so deep and has so many good teams. And Hayden Brown, the power forward from the Citadel, reigning conference player of the year, he's still at the Citadel after, I think he tested the transfer portal a little bit, decided elected to come back, play for Coach Dugan, and maybe just a fantastic score, but you know, the, 
the depth of talent in this conference and the depth of coaching in this conference is something that there's not there's not many games that are going to be like tonight's and I and I would consider tonight's game an anomaly Bryant over in Spartanburg VMI up on Wofford 59 53 that's getting toward the later stage of second half that three-pointer off the mark, J.P. Pegues, the freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee. And if you're in some good games nationally, you'll be going on, on the national broadcast later online to talk about the national scene and see, seeing some good ones tonight around the country. Well, Seton Hall and Providence. Seton Hall coming off only two practices in the last two weeks, and then you're walking into basically a hornet's nest, going to play Providence, who's 10-1 and one on the season. Ed Cooley doing a terrific job. They have one of the best... Big nice men in the country, the excellent pass. They have one, Providence has one of the best big men in the country, Nate Watson. He's tough to guard, and Seton Hall's dealing with their share of injuries with Iko Biagu, big seven-footer, who is their rim protector, Florida State transfer. But it's going to be an interesting game. But LSU also on top of or Auburn beating LSU by 11. A little bit left to go in the second half. Then the big one tonight, Tennessee, Alabama, just another good game as Logan Dye takes a spill. Looks like he twisted his ankle. There's two places Auburn. Furman went in a couple years ago, lost in overtime. It was, you know, the Paladins got in a little foul total. Jalen Pugh, a big game in Auburn, and Furman's also went into Thompson Boiling Arena a couple years ago and gave the Vols a scare. So some SEC schools that, you know, it's fun in non-conference play. People are scared. To, you to start seeing schedule. scheduling and yeah. you start seeing, hey, uh, you know, you want to play Furman, Sanford's getting that way. And then, you know, talking to Coach Richie about scheduling, say, hey, I'm not going to call people out for being scared to play us because it's hard to find games. Well, you become, you become a victim of your own success. And what happens is you end up playing a lot of games against other really good mid-majors. For example, Appalachian State's a very good mid-major. They're going to compete at a high level at the Sun Belt. Furman brings them in, has to beat them. And they did so handily as Jalen Slauson checks out what's presumably the last time. How good's he been? I mean, fantastic on all accounts. Yeah, you look at you know, 12 points, 6 of 7 from the line, 9 rebounds. Slauson just a rebound away from a double-double. But as you said, 30-point game, SoCon opener might be the night for the senior out of Somerville. Yeah, and a good opportunity for Tyrese Huey, who you see number 15, who's setting the ball screen. Hasn't gotten a lot of reps this year. Only his second game of the season. So get your red shirt pulled. We could get a close-up on number 15 there, Tyrese Huey. Get your red shirt pulled, and then right away, come off the bench, play 18 minutes, go 3 of 5 from the field. Next game, I'll turn over. It's getting sloppy. It's getting sloppy. Next game, start your second collegiate game after red shirting the first half of the season. You've got to commend his effort as... Furman, obviously, they push the pace right here. They're going to be able to get what they want. It's Foster sends it to the corner. Three-pointer on the way. Anderson, yes. Joe Anderson now in double figures with 11. Another player to watch, though, here are the, uh, the Paladins is, is J.P. Pagese, this freshman out of Nashville. Coach Ritchie's saying, hey, he could be a big-time player as he starts working the rotation. Here's Garrison on the steal. Yeah, J.P. Pagese from Hillsboro High School outside of Nashville. Really good athlete, good size at the point guard position. It might take him a little while. Had a little bit of an acting job by Rilly. But at the same time, he was holding his defensive position. Foster not happy with the call, but Bob telling him, hey, man, go ahead and get back. Don't worry about this. But Pegues, you see him on the on the screen. Good athlete. He, Coach Ritchie at the beginning of the season said, hey, man, he's a little bit ahead of what we thought he was going to be. Uh, quality defender. He's going to be a solid point guard for a lot of years. Uh, for Coach Ritchie. Ehrman up 32 points. The largest lead has been 33 here tonight against the Bulldogs. Now tough tough runner up and in at the 5'10 mark. 75 four. So put yourself on the bench for both these teams. You talked about Furman. Hey, you don't want to get sloppy. You get some other minutes, but still like they're still trying to run with the, the game plan, which is, you know, get out in transition, spread the floor. Well, Sanford's not leaving him any options. I mean, what are you going to do, pull the ball back every time you have a three-on-one break? And when you throw the ball over the top against pressure, you're going to open yourselves up to, to things like that. And in Furman, I'm not gonna, it, it would almost be irresponsible to not take advantage of those situations because you're inhibiting the development of some of your younger players that are in the game right now. And Foster has shown the ability to make the right decision, needs to make his free throws, but... This Paladins team, whenever you bring the bench in, you've got Kylie Garrison in there kind of to settle the, you know, settle his guys down, but the rest are all freshmen and sophomores. Or COVID freshmen, if you will. 
One of two from the line. Under five to go here in this Southern Conference opener. Furman will be back in action. Lexington, Virginia on Saturday, 2 p.m. tip at VMI. That's, talk about a, become a, not only a tough place to play, a tough team to beat, the VMI Key Dets. So Dan Earl, right, does a great job up there getting his guys to play offensively. They've got a big man up there that can really play inside out basketball. Is it Jake Stevens, correct? Big Excellent guy. big guy, can shoot the ball. They initiate offense through him, really skilled. Not overly athletic, but BMI has pieces, and offensively, Coach Earl always has those guys going. Three-pointer off the mark. Bulldogs cool from the outside tonight. Just 4 of 24 from long range. Furman 12 of 31. Hey, talking to Coach Richie before this game, very complimentary of Coach Bucky McMillan. He said, hey, a lot of guys were saying, hey, it was coming from the high school level. He goes, no, being a head coach, good experience, but Coach Richie, very complimentary of his counterpart on the Sanford. Well, Richie. he was also very complimentary of the staff uh, uh, on Sanford's roster. Uh, you know, several head coaches. Uh, his, Bucky McMillan's college coach is actually also on staff who coached him at Birmingham Southern. And it's just a bunch of guys that can, that have been in that seat and know the responsibilities that come with it. And it helps It helps out things, obviously. Be two at the line for Sanford and we come back. 3.41 to go, Furman Cruising here in Greenville. 76.45, Palin is Bryant Lambert, Terrence Ogilvy is back with you. Furman looks to salt off this Southern Conference opening victory. And hey, what you said, hey, you're, Paladins, you don't want to it's give not Coach over yet, Brian. But you said you it's don't. It's not over yet. You said you don't want to give Coach Richie and the staff anything to pull. Tell you what, Coach Richie's last three or four, three or four minutes, they've pulled some clips that he'll be able to show in the room of what not to do. Well, you don't want the drop off, and he, he's leaving Conley Garrison in there to settle everybody down. But now you have Jalen Pugh, who hasn't played a ton this season. You bring him in there; he's an older player, but he's kind of a live-by-the-moment kind of guy. He's going to make some quick decisions. He's looking to come in there and shoot. But these are great minutes for Hewley, great minutes for Anderson, J.P. Pegues, for them to might make the right decisions. And there's another one, another right decision. Now, the shots don't always go in, but the right plays are being made. And if you're Coach Richie, you have to be excited about that. You heard the crowd happy with those two missed free throws. That's a free chicken biscuit. For those in attendance for the two missed free throws in the second half, 76-47, leads at 29. Ball sent to the corner. Few thought about a three out to Joe Anderson. Wide open look, knocks it down. And you know what, these, these looks for the Furman Pallet as they're getting are just so open that he said you'd be foolish to pass them up at points. Well, Anderson's 4-7 tonight, and they've all been wide open to where he can basically check the wind if there was any wind in here. Knock him in. He's, get, he's doing a nice job of setting his feet and towing the line. Sometimes young players can get a little too far spaced out. He's jumping. He's stepping into his catches and knocking down shots. Nice job. He's getting his feet set, extending high. He's got a high release point. He shoots the ball really high, too. But tonight, you can't really complain about much. And 13 made three-pointers for the Paladins, 38%. From behind the arm, that free throw knocked down by Campbell. Heen back in. Garrison will take a seat. Nice night for Conley Garrison. 11 points, 3 of 5, as you mentioned, from the field. Four rebounds and always at the right spot at the right time. Well, he just kind of, he's the guy in that starting lineup that you can rely on to be at the right spot and make the right basketball play. And when you have three guys in Bothwell, Hunter, and Slauson that are more so geared to score than he is, he fits in perfectly, and he's such a good athlete defensively, too. Sanford will stay in this full court pressure. Now, if you're good Bucky McMillan, the, so again, Furman beats the pressure, at least to open three-pointers in the corner, you got to take them. And do, you, do you flush this one and move on, or is there stuff you can take from this game? There's always a balance in some games like this. Some coaches say, you know what? You take it, you go, it's an anomaly. What do you do if you're the Sanford program? Well, I mean, you, you flush this one. There's not a whole lot you can learn besides, hey, you better come ready to play in SOCOM. I, I think that's one thing that you take away, but you also realize the importance of, you know, your good players need to be good, and when you don't have your really good players playing, it makes it really difficult, especially in the type of competition that they're going to play in their league. Pull up three, Torment Carnett Jr. off the mark, and 
Tell you what, follows his own shot, battles for a rebound as we tie it up by Tryon. Patlinans get it on the alternating arrow, and even two minutes to go in the game, 79. 49 Paladins. I tell you what, Tears, we're going to get a good chance to look at a lot of Southern Conference teams this year. SoCon's getting a bit of attention nationally when you look at wins out of it and RPIs and what things are going. It's, a, it's not just a top heavy league, it is a very balanced league in terms of competition night in, night out. Well, there, there was a ranking that came out tonight against the teams against Quad One, Quad Two, and Quad Three. Now the 35 conferences, SoCon checks in at 12. That didn't always used to be the case. They've done a nice job playing against high-level opponents on the road. They've won those games. And even though Ole Miss, for example, might be a quad two, you still got to make sure to get your conference in position to win some of those games. And that'll pay off towards the end of the season when you're hoping when the SoCon could turn into a two-bid league later on down the line. Two years ago, right before the COVID year, when Wofford made the run through the tournament. It was UNCG and Furman that were legitimately on the bubble for the NCAA. Both ended up in the NIT. Furman hosted Wichita State inside Timmons Arena. A great night for, for Furman basketball. Lost a close one. But that was the year where I think people started realizing, hey, Southern Conference is for real. Kind of, it's awareness and then reality, and people will now realize how good the Southern Conference well, is. Well, I think it also goes back to the depth of talent you have in the south, southern part of the United States. Like, you can recruit a lot of SOCON level kids out of the state of South Carolina, out of the state of Georgia, out of the state of North Carolina. Alabama even has improved as of late. And it's basically a trickle up effect, if you will. But I swear, if I'm Coach Richie, anybody who fouls from here till the end of the game is getting benched. Like, enough's enough. I need the refs to swallow their whistle. I'm starving. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, uh, this is, uh, you know, Furman just continues to make the right decision. Sanford's trying to push the pace. And, you know, if there were more things like that occurring throughout the course of the game, drives to the basket, get down to that charge circle, and then pitch out for open threes, this game could be closer. Uh, but, you know, Furman just continues to run quality offense. 105 to go. Coach Ritchie and his wife Jess, nice shot in and out. Expecting their third child any day now. Coach Ritchie said though, hey, we, we've worked it out. He goes, I'm gonna definitely be at the birth. He goes, I'm gonna try not to miss a game. But of course thoughts with, with Jess and her entire family with Coach Ritchie as they expect the, the birth of their third child. We saw that there are two other kids here tonight. Their youngest, Mac Ritchie. Said, you excited for have your brother, he kind of shrugged. He said, yeah, I think so. Let's go ahead and break more in the, <laughs> so in the he goes, But congratulations and, and be thinking about Jess Ritchie, the entire Ritchie family over the next couple of weeks. Here under a minute to go, the Paladins up 30. Here's Anderson. Be a whistle and a foul and be two shots coming at the line. Go to the line, taking a look at Papa John's player of the game tonight for the Paladins. Look no further than 6'3", senior out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Mike Bothwell, and I'll tell you what, he did it all. He went down, knocked some down from the outside, and uh, he really spurred the Paladins on early. Oh, he really did. Here in the, first, in the first half of this game, really attacked pressure, found ways to score, and was unselfish, and was rewarded for being unselfish. Mike Bothwell, Absolutely excellent. And it makes it so many different places. It makes it so difficult to guard. One night it's going to be Jalen Slauson, another Hunter. Tonight it just happened to be Mike Bothwell, who's had his share of big time games this season. There's Jalen Pugh, went into battle for the rebound and one and one on the other side. And Darren, she hit your uh, spot of not fouling up 30 under a minute. Get him out. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you, you hope to finish plays as. Sanford's going to go down and shoot Tryon. I was looking forward to watching Tryon. 6'11", he's at the free throw line now. 6'11", has nice touch from the outside. I think he's a little bit of blood. But See what the Paladins have. We mentioned that VMI coming up, and they'll be on the road at Greensboro before back home downtown. Bon Secours Wellness Arena against Mercer, ETSU. <laughs> no gimmies, but think what VMI on the road right now in Spartanburg. 157 to go, seven-point lead over Wofford. Circle this game Saturday, VMI and Furman, that could have implications. I mean, it's murderer's row. And it, 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 there's so many teams. You look at all those all those teams right there. Des, Desmond Oliver's done a nice job at ETSU so far. Mercer has quality scores and quality coaching. 
down in Macon and UTC has got some big time players as well. It's every single night in the SOCOM. Robert Swanson, senior out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, in for the Paladins, getting some action. Hey, what? I need Swanson, Swanee great, to bug I need great guy, team, rallies around him, works hard every day. I tell you what, you got to get a shot here for, for number 11. Hey, get my man Swanee a J. A little bit of a second differential shot in game clock. The geese. Then to Anderson. They're trying to give him the kick out. I think they're trying, Terrence, to draw the defense in, kick it to Swanson for the corner, Jay. Anderson down the lane. And Man, what an Coaches have to finish, and how about that? Huey, just such a good athlete when attacking the basket. He has been impressive tonight in a blowout win for Furman. Sanford wasn't at full strength, but nonetheless, you still got to put up these kind of numbers. And offensively, they were exceptional. Moving the ball, attacking pressure, finishing possessions, and knocking down three-point shots. Kudos to Furman. Opening up 1-0 in SOCOM play.